you thieving bastards. You crispy shoe wearing motherfuckers, dude. You know what? I was going through my phone. Just on that hey you thieving bastards note. I was going through my phone. And there was a bunch of videos. Like a whole bunch of blah, 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 blah. In the gallery. i never seen them before. And it was all my son's face. I'm like, what's this little fucker up to, you know? And he had made a bunch of little YouTube videos of his own. And he started each one off. Hey, you thieving bastards. It's like, I can't even say that anymore, dude. Without thinking of my little guy. That was so adorable, dude. Classic. One of them was a good comedy set, too. Hilarious, dude. He slayed it. He was uh, Words that he thought was funny. Right? Dude, I ought to smack you right in the peephole. I just smack you right in your whorish peephole. <clears throat> I just wanted to say peephole because that's a funny word to me. Peephole, dude. I do like a good peephole. I'll tell you. I got one right there. Right over there in the wall to this room, there's a peephole that I could see out into my fucking living room and my front door. Well, duh. You think I'm going to sit back here making a fucking video up in this jank while everybody and their mother's running through? No, no, no. I want to see through that people and be like, yo. Hey, you, get the fuck out of here. Hey, get the fuck out of here. Huh? That's one saying, right, that I learned. From. Oh, look. K.O. Manny, baby, dude. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Huh? Dude, I got people calling me, bugging the shit out of me. Like, talking about 500 bucks is a deal, dude, for an un neutered or unspayed one of those dude just total blessing ko manny's go google that shit five hundred dollars is a fucking deal for an unspayed one of those are you kidding me or unneutered fuck you could have a brood if everyone is worth 500 bucks and you get a load five or six of them just do the math dude i mean that granite i i you know i will stick by what i said dude it's it the cat game is you spend a thousand dollars to make a hundred that's facts you know what I mean you gotta love the animals but couple of things you guys that we saw dude being on the wall I wanted to save this and make a wall uh, video because the wall is off the chain dude you know what they did they had all those prototypes out there dude of all the fucking different kinds and they were all like 20 or 30 foot sections you know which one won the one that was one steel stick at a time and you put all those steel sticks together and not only can you bend and traverse really difficult terrain but they all fucking stick together and they sit in the sun and get hot as fuck dude you could definitely fry an egg off of that thing dude the motherfuckers weren't lying about it it's hot to the touch okay you could fry an egg off that. You could definitely melt your dabs. I think if you did that shit at noon, one o'clock, you could get the dab to smoke, right? Well, right, you know, I, I, it's got to be like 700 degrees. I get that to vaporize at least. So you might, you're not going to do that, but you'll definitely, you might be able to get it to smolder. You definitely get it to melt. An egg you will fry all day. So I saw these guys. They made this ladder, dude, out of aluminum. They took, I don't know where they got it, but they got aluminum tubing that was about as big as a cigar or a cigarette or maybe in between the two, you know, maybe as big as a, a regular Sharpie marker, you know, like, you know, maybe about that big, obviously hollow because they were light, dude. So this thing was like 50 or 60 feet long and one guy was just carrying it with one hand, you know, just like, so you could tell it was light. And there was two pieces of tube aluminum that were hooked at the top like that and came straight down and then had aluminum rungs. And this guy is just carrying it. And along the wall, dude, on the western most part, it just goes, uh, runs on the Mexican side along a freeway. On the American side, it's just, it's called the uh, border fields. It's a bog and an estuary. Totally empty, void. You can see everything from a mile away, all the way around. But on the Mexican side, the freeway that goes to the beaches and then heads south and goes to Rosarito and uh, all the way to Cabo San Lucas, 
starts off along the wall and runs right along it. So the cars are going by fast. Dude, there's only two lanes. There's no shoulders. There's no fucking place to pull over. Sometimes cars have trouble and it backs everything up. It's totally fucked. But that's what they're dealing with. So they do have that cover there because there's no way you can police it or regulate it or have anybody stand guard or, you know what? I mean, there's just cars. Choo, 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 just hauling ass. And they did have a problem with people running back and forth, especially to stay away from the police because in the neighborhood side, it's like where all the drugs are at and stuff. So a lot of the drug addicts would run across the freeway and hide on the other side when the cops came and were getting killed and hit by cars and then backing traffic up. And so they put up a divider in the center that you really can't get across. It's almost like the wall, dude. It's all a bunch of millions of sticks stuck in the ground. They're too close together to squeeze in between and too uh, slick and tall to climb over. People do it, but you gotta be a good climber. So anyway, so it's very barren and desolate right there. So if you wanna do something, you definitely have the time and the hidden you know, aspects, just like being on the shoulder of a freeway, you know, like who would ever see you there? And so we seen him, dude, sure enough. And he just jogging right down. It had a couple of people behind him that I guess were going to go. And this guy just re leaned it up with one hand, dude, and hooked it on the top. And the people just went one at a time, dude. And uh, the guy would get at the top, sit on the wall, pick the ladder up, spin it to the other side, climb down. And, I mean, you can reach through it, too, because they, they wanted it see-through so they could see who's on the other side. So you can see when people are gathering and that you're never surprised by, oh, shit. So that's one advantage that they could see through it, what's going on. But one disadvantage is you can reach through and, and grab the fucking ladder and pull it back to the other side, right? Or if you had two ladders, you put one on one side, one on the other. They were doing it. And I was like, fuck, that's a good idea. It's, it's working. Look, dude, it's working. They figured it out. And the next day, the next fucking day, I was driving down the freeway, going home from San Diego. And sure enough, there was the dude, man. And fucking, I should have pulled over and got footage. I'll get it. It's just a matter of time. But people are, but where do they go? It's like, you know what I mean? Like if you bring five or 10 people, you're bringing five or 10 people with the plan that five of them are going to get caught or six or seven of them are going to get caught. But the one or two that make it, I guess, that's who you're making your money off of. You know, you got to have five people go one way, cause a distraction, and then two people will make it the other way. I don't know how that works, dude, because they had a wall already. They wanted the other wall, the new wall and all that, so that they have a double wall with a buffer zone in between. That way when you jump one of them, you're kind of trapped in between two and it gives them time, the border patrol, to gather and, and send people over that way to apprehend you. Or if you do make it though, and you're in the estuary, where the fuck are you gonna go? There's like, there's nowhere to go, there's nowhere to be hidden, I don't know. But whatever, just thought I'd report on that, that's what's going on. There was something else, I knew I should have wrote all this stuff down. Um, yeah, oh, you know, I, I, just a thought, because I should have wrote all this stuff down. And my mind jumps back and forth from topics. But I was just thinking, dude, if you have man boobs or moobs, your chances of breast cancer probably increases significantly. Just a thought, dude, just a thought, just for what it's worth, you know. If you can, don't get moobs, you know what I mean? Do what you got to do. Maybe skip a meal, drink a glass of water. Don't be afraid to work out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the fucking wall, dude. So, anyway. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. People are doing stuff. People are doing stuff. They got it down. Seasons. That's what I was going to talk about. Seasons, dude. You know you're in a hip place or good spot if it has seasons. Meaning like tourist season where like it's so cool wherever you're at that mad people come and you have like longer traffic lines, a little bit more crowding. The businesses are definitely making money, love and life. And then all of a sudden the season ends and everything gets quiet, locals only, 
Uh, the bad side is is that people are making money, like restaurants, food service, um, you know, most businesses. When the season ends, you're used to making loot every day, and then it like, oh fuck, because dude, the border traffic had just disappeared, and it was like, I'm like, what the fuck happened? Like, all the traffic disappeared. There's parking spaces like available right on the beachfront, and I was like, that was not the case a couple weeks ago, and I heard, uh, I was watching um, uh, old man Mackie. I was watching um, Mac. Big Mac doing a live stream and Cause was there and they were talking about, well, the season has definitely started. I said, see, well, the Slab City is a happening place then. It has a season. If you have seasons, you're a happening place. And they were talking about, well, the season, I guess, just started. And so there I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, see, Hip Place has seasons. Like people come there because it's cool. And so their season just started, which is good for them business-wise, monetarily-wise sucks for like privacy wise and you know and dealing with like outsiders and people coming in and might not be respectful or you know yeah a whole range of different things good and bad but your season has started and i was thinking whoa our season just ended like now i don't wait in traffic because we do have a season dude baja california almost like the slabs is a desert off-road Paradise. People come down here. You see trucks with dune buggies and bikes on them in traffic at the border around town. The beach is a zoo. People are zooming up and down the streets on ATVs, motorcycles. You see people with trailers pulling dune buggies and and different shit. And the beaches are crowded. And you know, think about it, dude. If, if it's known for surfing, fishing, kayaking. And off-road desert shit like Mickey Thompson's, uh, the Baja uh, 1000, uh, Mickey Thompson off-road race. All that shit happens here. And so during the summertime and now that that ended, the season is over. So for us, because it's a hip, cool place to be, we have seasons and the season ended. And it's like, no, Joe, you don't have to wait in traffic every day for hours. Now it's like, bam. And like, no, Joe, you don't have to like park five blocks away because it's so big like there's parking right out in front because your season just ended so now it's just going to be quiet the only bummer is the water temperature is getting a little chilly dude i've been kayak fishing and there's a lot of fucking dolphins dude and dolphins are scary as fuck because they don't you don't have any warning they just pop up right by you. They're really curious and playful. And the first thing they do, like any mammal that's been underwater for a long time, as soon as you hit the surface, you're like, <gasps> but actually <coughs> they breathe out first. <sighs> like that. It's like a fucking massive release of air pressure, dude. It's crazy. And you have no warning of it. Like they're just so smooth. It's just like, you're just sitting there and then five feet away, you're, <sighs> You're like, fuck, what the fuck? And you look and it's like, and they got the craziest eyes, dude. And they, they look just like this, dude. They have whites and a pupil and they, they look you up and down. They kind of lay back like this so they could see. And they eye fuck the shit out of you like this. And if you swim to try and touch them, they don't like paddle or wiggle to get out of the way. They just somehow just keep drifting back with the big old loped out eyes like that and they just keep drifting back away from you dude you're like I, you can't touch them it's like weird they're like a mythological creature i put them up on the same i equate them to like unicorns and shit because you like you can't get close to them you hear about them but how many of you have actually seen a dolphin in the wild dude okay it's fucking weird, dude. It's not as mystical and magical as you think. It's kind of fucking freaky. You know, I don't know how you are, but me, like even in my mind, I could be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go fucking paddle out right now. Ugh. And I get all the shit, you know, and as you're getting all the shit, you're like, really, dude, you're gonna go, like, that's like, I don't know, dude, the surf's pushing you back and you're gonna have to fight through and like fucking, then when you get out there, dude, you're just, you're just floating around out there. 
And yeah, I'm floating around out there, dude, in the depths. And then you see these big black fucking fins come out of the water. And then it blows. Air, and they're like looking at you like, and you're like, fuck, dude, it's freaky. It's crazy. But then you see that they're really playful and they're cool. Seals. Seals are the motherfuckers, dude. Because they're like dogs. Some of them are nice and playful, and some of them are aggressive and mean, but they're, they're all, like, even the playful ones, dude, they'll, they'll fuck you up, dude. They come close, they're curious, they fucking do drive-bys on your ass, they, they do the fake pump, the pump fake, they do that where they're like, you know, they get close and do that and then move at the last second, it's like, fuck, dude, did you just pump fake me, seal? Did you just fucking pump fake your boy, dude, out here, like, Leave me alone, dude. I'm, it's fucking scary. It can be scary. So, you know, I don't know. See, the dolphins, uh, for, uh, for a split second, then you see like, oh, they're so fucking cool and majestical. And, dude, they're out there. I paddled out as the sun was going down yesterday because my son wanted to boogie board. And, uh, and I'm like, fuck it, let's just go. So... I became a thieving bastard, okay? I'm not... I'm, I'm gonna just say it. I wasn't gonna tell this because the... There was a fucking putting, uh, like a golf, not a putting, but a, 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 a driving range, okay? A golf driving range, but it's dilapidated, meaning it's not in business anymore and it's fallen into disrepair, okay? I haven't seen anybody out there in like fucking 10 years. Every now and then, I think the owner that lives in the house uh, at the front of the property, because it's like a couple of acres, and, uh, you know... But a couple acres surrounded by 100 foot tall netting, dude. And it's fallen over in certain spots. So I'm like, I watch these net fishermen getting theirs, dude. Okay, they're fucking getting theirs, bro. And I want to get on that shit, right? So I fucking went and I ganked a piece of fucking net. And then, you know, and I had to tie weights to it and see how they do it and everything. Let me tell you, man, nets are a motherfucker. They get tangled up so easy. You're constantly undoing them. You got to be really careful with them. And uh, so I brought the net out there with me and I'm throwing the net around and shit. But fuck, it got all tangled up, dude. And it was just like a fucking uh, nightmare. But I got a free net. Pretty cool, right? I'm thinking about going and getting more, dude, because like net... The more you have, the better. But the more you have, it's heavy too. It's heavy to pull in. So anyway, I totally forgot where I was going with that. I had a point to it, but whatever, whatever. It's like so. It's like somebody's telling me, like, dude, just just put a video out, dude. Like, just put a video out. Like Big Rick Sanchez said, I look like shit in my last video. So I was like, fuck, erase that. I'm under a lot of duress, and I don't have an appetite. When I'm stressed, if I have a problem, I don't want to eat. You're like, dude, let's go get, no, 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 let's not eat. Let's go solve this fucking problem. Let's go solve this fucking problem and then we'll eat. That's how my mind works. So sometimes like I need somebody to be like, well, you know what, Joe? This is like a two or three day or two or three week problems solving. Like, like, you know what I mean? This is not the kind of problem that you solve, right? Like my registration on the old 77 F250. Like you have to get a few things before you're ready to go get it smogged and then you get it smogged and then you get your registration and then first before all that we had to go get it insured. So it's like it's not a fucking uh, before lunch, you know, let's go take care of this and then we'll eat type of thing. It's like a, a week, a two week process. So it's like I have to, you know, slow down, get something to eat, but it's hard, man. It's my brain doesn't work like that. I get stressed out. And I just, I don't want to eat. Like, no, 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 I'll eat after. Let's go fucking take care of this thing. Let's go take care of this thing. And so I finally took care of that thing. But plus me and, you know, Rosa were going through some shit. And uh, my son. And uh, yeah, so. And I agreed. I went back and said, damn, yeah, you look like shit, dude. You need to introduce some more dairy into your fucking uh, diet, obviously. Uh, and my eyes were sinking in and um, so you know hopefully I look a little more rested I feel like I've been handling problems one at a time as they come and everything's working out dude uh, man the Lord's been blessing me man um, 
That's how I know when I'm doing the right thing. First of all, I just want to say this. Somebody told me, well, Joe, what I see is I see a man trying to do everything himself. I see somebody that's up against some serious problems that has some uh, like real thinking, real like big boy stuff to do. And you're trying to do it all yourself. And I'm like, well, I don't have anybody else. How am I supposed to do it? And he's like, dude, you're not supposed to rely on anybody else. All you got to do is rely on God. So my advice would be, whatever you do, put God first. And I never understood what that meant. Like, what do you mean put God first? Like, what the fuck does God need that I could do? What, In other words, what could I possibly do for the entity that created everything and all his infinite wisdom and how everything works together and so amazingly by design is perfection how, what do I have to... Well, the Bible says that God is a God of principles. Okay? It's not the act or the actual physical occurrence. It's the intention. It's the principle behind it. And so, if you put God first before you do anything else, you make a conscious decision. Because it ain't easy. Let me tell you, I get up and do about 50 things before I realize, oh... I got to put God first. I got to get on the altar first. And, and I only do two things. Because I don't pray for people. I figure if they're sick, it's God's will. He's going to do what he wants. I know people that he had taken cancer and he took them that way. I know people that he's cured from. So it's his will. It doesn't matter what you ask for. It's his will. What's his will? So I don't pray for people for sickness or any of that. It's whatever God's will is, that's what's going to happen, okay? I thank him. I thank him. I just thank him because if I got up and I have air in my breath and I have a nice place to live and stuff and I'm getting my son ready or, you know, initially I always wake up and I'm like, okay, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do this. And where I used to be stressed, now I, I thank God. I say thank you that I have stuff to do because I've been lost before. I've been directionless. So the fact that I have stuff to do, people depending on me and responsibility, I'm like, thank you. So that's it. That's first and foremost. I get on the altar before I take a piss, before I have a smoke, before I dump the cat box, before I load my tools in the truck, before I get my son ready for school, I get on the altar. I'm not going to put my son before God. I'm not going to put my tree business before God. I'm not going to put my cat breeding operation, nothing. I'm going to get on the altar first and foremost. First thing I'm going to do is thank him. Thank you for giving me things in life and responsibilities and seeing me fit to live another day. Because I have fun in my days, you know what I mean? Even when I'm working shitty, dude. I'm puffing big smoke, you know what I mean? I'm thinking, I'm writing stuff down, I'm having laughs, making money, you know what I mean? Doing things fun, like kayak fishing. So my first thing is, thank you, thank you. And then number two is, order my steps. Because I'm a dumb motherfucker, dude. And I know left to myself, my, like, 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 let me do what I think should be done. A, B, C, D is completely wrong and fucked up. Okay? So I ask God order my steps. And then, then you have to be obedient. Like the other day he said, just get the insurance. And I'm like, oh, I don't have the money. I'll just do it tomorrow. And then I could hear God saying, ah, you're not, you're not, I'm ordering your step, but you're not listening. Okay. Then I didn't get the insurance and I started driving home and I'm unloading the tools and the phone rings and a guy calls and he's like, hey man, can you come over here and do this for me for two hours? I'll pay you this much. It was the exact amount that the fucking insurance costs. Oh, which by the way, right before that, I said, Lord, just send me the means to pay for this insurance. And I'll, So it's like, I should have just trusted him because it came anyway, but that's okay. So... It came and I went and did that today and I got the insurance and, you know. So getting back to ordering my steps, okay? So only two things I ask. So every day I get on and I make it a point because God's got a principle, right? So it's the principle that I'm getting up and before I smoke, before I take a piss, before I clean the cat box, before I get my son ready, 
I'm not going to put any of those things first before God. What I'm going to do is first say, oh, get on the altar on my hands and knees and thank God. And then ask him to order my steps throughout the day. And then we're golden. Then I go dump the cat box and I do this and do that. Now this morning, it's not as easy said than done, especially of a lifetime of doing all the wrong things. I do not get up with God on my mind first, okay? Facts, right? I caught myself this morning cleaning the cat box. And I'm out in the surf like, oh, wow, it's so beautiful. Man, God sure just is the ultimate artist. And I'm like, oh, okay, shit, fuck. I'm like, well, I'm not going to walk all the way back up here. Let me just do it now, dude. Hopefully somebody is watching, actually. And I just got on my hands and knees, dude, right there on the beach. I was like, yo. You know what I mean? You, buddy. Hey. Yeah. I just start pointing like that. That way, if anybody is watching, they know what I'm doing. Because I know it says a secret place counts the most, but I want people to see it, dude. I'm not ashamed, right? I'm not ashamed, dude. So I got down and I was, forgive me, Lord, for putting the cats first before you, dude. Facts. That's what you did do. But I realize it and I say, forgive me. So it's actually three things, you guys. I actually start off asking for forgiveness because I usually do do something else. And then like, oh, shit, and have to go back. Like, all right, forgive me, Lord. I'm putting you first. Stop doing that. I'll go back to that. Just uh, thank you so much. And order my steps, right? And with that, we'll see you guys next time. I highly suggest you do it. You can do it if you want or not. But what I do want you to do is stay golden. Showers.